Hello and welcome to Inside the Owls Borough presented by Baptist Hell. I'm Frank Fort. Before the Owl men's basketball team went off to the American Conference Tournament in Fort Worth, they finished up the regular season with an important victory here at home against Memphis. It guaranteed the Owls a second place finish in the league standings. Prior to the game, Florida Atlantic honored their three seniors, Brian Greenlee, Jalen Gaffney and Brandon Weatherspoon. All three have made significant contributions to the program over the past couple of seasons. Today, though, we focus on the story of Spoon. Crossover, quick hands, Captain stolen by Davis. Davis lobs up ahead. Weatherspoon in stride and a left-handed tomahawk jam. A transition bucket. How do you think your games changed or evolved? since you've come here? I just turned into a big defensive guy. Um, like, um, I just make sure everybody on, on the defensive end be connected. Um, my first year here, I couldn't guard as well until like Coach May just to told me, like, it's a hard thing. It's a one thing to play defense. And um, I just turned it up a notch defensively, and we just got to it. He takes what the game gives him. Um, he's, he's aggressive attacking the rim. Uh, he's aggressive shooting the ball in transition. He gives us another element because he can space the floor, but uh, most importantly, he can guard bigger players, and he has the physical, uh, the physicality that this team needs uh, to overcome our, our size deficiencies. And uh, when he's in the game, our rebounding's better, our, our team defense is better, and then obviously he's, his scoring uh, capabilities, um, you know, makes everyone around him better. His intensity and his energy and, and uh, communication. So I, I could go on and on about the contributions that, that Spoon makes to our team. Golden to Weatherspoon, drives from the left, knives inside, and a two-handed flush soaring through the air, Brandon Weatherspoon. One thing you seem to care about, more so than any numbers you might or might not put up, is winning the basketball game. To you, is there no feeling like that? Um, yeah, man, winning is, win is just wonderful. I just want to win at the end of the day. That's, that's what I told Coach May before I came here. Um, I just want to win, Coach, whether it's we win by one, two, whatever it takes, whatever I need to do to win. If he's boxing out a big guy or guarding a big guy, I'm, I'm down to do that in order to win. You seem comfortable in, in either of those roles, whether it's starting a game or, or coming in you know, early in the first half? Most definitely, but I, I love coming off the bench. Um, I started a couple games early in the season, and, and after one of those games, I walked in the office and told, told Coach May, um, Coach, I'd rather just come off the bench. Like, I just like coming off the bench because it's the thing about coming off the bench. Like You come off with that extra fire, the other team would be a little bit tired, tired. Now I had that extra run in me to get us going. So I just like coming off the bench because I just just like it. Like it's, it's just bench mob. Like we a bench mob. Like you all always see us over there having fun, like celebrate. I just like giving that energy into people around me. Hey, talk a little bit louder, Nell. Come on. You see it? Hey, I'm big. Stay up, Nell. Stay up, Nell. Are you a loud guy on the court? Do you talk a lot to your teammates? Um, yeah, you probably hear me screaming from time to time to make sure we're on the same page. But um, um, I just make sure everybody hear me on the court. No matter if nobody's talking, um, I'm going to be the only one talking if nobody's talking. So I, I cover everybody. One of the assistant coaches said to me, Spoon is about as good a teammate as I've ever been around as a coach. What do you think makes you a good teammate? Just being positive, never being negative. Um, maybe if I see a teammate down here and there, um, just be just being a great teammate to, to that person. Um, just encourage everybody that's on the team. You know, um, I know how basketball, you can hit bumps in basketball. So I just try to be a great guy on and off the court and just let everybody know that's on the team that I love them. I truly care about them and that I'll go to the moon and back for them. He puts the, his teammates before himself, first and foremost. Uh, he never has a bad day. His energy never wavers. He's consumed with winning and helping the team. And uh, I, I think if, if we all have that mindset, and then we have the talent that he has, the competitive spirit that he has, um, and the desire to improve, then uh, you know, he, he contributes in so many ways. What do you enjoy most about this team, this group of players? Let's say probably the love we have for each other, like the genuine love, the laughs, the, the things, just off the court things, like um, just the team camaraderie we have. Like, I just love that about like, we're able to joke with each other about like, personal things and things like that off the court that bring us much more closer on the court. The Owls' John L. Davis was named AAC Co-Player of the Year and first-team All-Conference following the regular season. 
The junior from Gary, Indiana averaged 18.2 points per game on nearly 48% shooting and almost 44% on three-pointers, while adding 6.3 rebounds per game. It's always a dream just to get player of the year, but I knew uh, once I put the work in, anything is possible. I feel like it evolved a lot just for me, not, not, not being able to show have confidence in my shot, me just putting, putting the work in each and every night, showing that once you put the work in, anything is possible, and my percentage went up from there. And any award, like a Player of the Year award, is, is a team um, accolade. And, and without the, his teammates setting screens, getting him the ball, uh, being capable shooters and scorers themselves so they take up uh, the other team's attention and space, uh, he wouldn't be able to, to be in the position he's in. And then obviously his work ethic, his drive to, to improve has, has never wavered. And uh, that's why he continues to, to get better, and the sky's the limit for John L. Guard Elijah Martin was named to the all-conference second team after averaging 14.3 points and almost seven rebounds per game, along with nearly two steals per contest. Center Vlad Golden was also named to the second team after a career best season where he put up 15.1 points a game, 6.8 rebounds, and finished third in the nation in field goal percentage at 66.7%. For just the third time in school history and the second year in a row, the Owls earned a bid to the NCAA tournament. With a 25-8 record, the Owls were seeded eighth in the East Regional for March Madness. Coming up next, a look at some of the key newcomers for Owl football. That's straight ahead on Inside the Owls Borough. Inside the Owls Borough is presented by Baptist Health Orthopedic Care, the official sports medicine provider of Florida Atlantic Athletics by Cedar Foods, Cedar's No Better Hummus, by FAU MBA in Sport Management, helping the sports and entertainment executives of tomorrow, by Phil Smith Acura, driving the Owls to victory together in style, by Sage Dental, official dental provider of FAU Athletics, book at mysagedental.com, and by Shiner Law Group, the injury lawyers that get you more because you deserve more. The Owl women's tennis team tied a school record by winning 11 straight matches, tying the mark with a 4-3 victory over the University of Pennsylvania. Millie Mae Matthews put together an 11-2 record by mid-March, playing in the number five or six spot in the lineup. Freshman Panna Bartha put together an 11-match win streak of her own, playing at number one. The Owls climbed into the national polls for the first time this season. This is Inside the Owls Borough, presented by Baptist Health. I'm Frank Fort. Spring football practice is underway for the Owl football team. There are over 30 new players on the roster, and in particular, the wide receiver room and the defensive secondary look radically different. Everything you do today, tomorrow, for the rest of your time in this program affects whether we win or lose in the fall. It's fourth and inches, every damn play. Be that urgent and be that intentional with your work today. Good. Good. Philip Dunham played 24 games for Indiana over the past two seasons, but when the Hoosiers made a coaching change, Dunham started looking at options, especially in Florida. Since day one, I wanted to play closer to home. I feel like it's better for me, better for my mom, family. Come check up on me, come see me play, uh, come see me whenever they feel like it because it hurts me a little bit. And I see my sister can't get in a relationship with them a little bit. So, yeah, I want to be closer to home. What do you think you bring to this team? Leadership. Um, my teammates can count on me. Um, dependable. I'm going to put it all, I'll put it all on the line for my brothers. Uh, I just want to win. Among the new pass catchers is six foot four Marlon Johnson, who comes south from the University of Buffalo, where he posted 40 catches and four touchdowns last season. I graduated from Buffalo, so I felt like there was, I accomplished everything I really wanted to and needed to at Buffalo, and I just wanted to uh, reach out and see other opportunities that were in store for me. So this was my first official visit, and uh, once I got here, once I got here, it just felt like home. Uh, all the all of the guys from the staff and from the, the team, they just felt real down to earth and made my decision really, really comfortable. I'd say a, a big physical guy that go in there, get his nose dirty and, and blocks and stuff like that. And uh, just being able to make a big plays when the team needs to, third downs, touchdowns, stuff like that. I feel like my hands are really reliable. 
Also coming south, Johnson's teammate in Buffalo, defensive end Kyler Lang. He's ready to give the Owls defense and specifically pass rush a lift. I was looking for more of a field family thing and be closer to home because you know Buffalo is 25 hours away from Tallahassee. So just being close to home, being around family. I have uh, my grandpa lives in Port St. Lucie about 45 minutes away. So just being around family, I just need to get back to Florida, get that Florida heat, get that real Florida work. So it's good though. That's why I wanted to come down here. I just feel like I bring a different type of tenacity. I feel like as a D-line, last year the D-line wasn't as productive last year. So I feel like this year I can bring a lot of production on the edge, TFLs and sacks. But I just feel like I bring a, a tool of moves, a pass rush moves to the table. So I just feel like the pass rush standpoint of, of this season is going to be way better than last season. Running back C.J. Campbell went to Florida State as a walk-on with an academic scholarship. He was simply looking for a shot at more significant playing time. My style, I would say um, all purpose, I can do everything. You know, anything that um, the coaches need me to do, I can catch out the backfield, I can pass protect, I can run the ball downhill, outside with speed, you know, um, anything really. This is the second year for Coach Herman here, and um, you can feel the culture starting to change. You can feel the guys starting to buy in a lot more each and every day, you know, and uh, just coming in and competing against one another. And I feel like that's where it all starts um, to change the program. Ladies Night with FAU Football is April 3rd, starting at 5 p.m. Learn some X's and O's, strategy, and network with other fans. For more information, visit events.handbid.com. Coming up, spring is for soccer. We'll check in with the men's team as they get ready for a third season in the American Conference. That's next on Inside the Owls Borough. The Owls softball team took two of three in their first ever American Conference Series at Wichita State, and game three of that series saw a record performance from Trinity Schlotterbeck. In addition to picking up the win as the pitcher, Schlotterbeck tied the school record with three homers in the game and set a new record with nine runs driven in as the Owls won 17-5 over the Shockers. Welcome back to Inside the Owls Borough, presented by Baptist Health. Last fall, the Florida Atlantic men's soccer team twice defeated a nationally ranked FIU squad, including once at the conference tournament. Head coach Joey Worthen's team is finishing up spring practice now as they get ready for what will be year three in the American Athletic Conference. Manipulate their shape, move the ball around the back in the field, between the sixes, we manipulate their shape so that we can then find that pass to go into the striker's feet and then be able to play on them. I think for men's soccer it's been very unique because we played in Conference USA, which was a really strong conference, uh, soccer specifically, and then going into the American was, was just more of the same. Uh, really strong conference. Uh, getting four or five teams uh, into the NCAA tournament out of a nine or ten team field is, is strong. So, uh, but I think that we've adjusted well and for us to be able to, to make it into the conference tournament, be able to compete in the, the semifinals and, and uh, be able to pick up, up some big wins has been great for us. How would you describe your style when you're playing well? Uh, a high pressure style, I think that's been one of the things that we've seen in this conference is it is, uh, it's really end to end. There's less um, kind of set up and, and kind of game manipulation. It's a very end-to-end -end, uh, in the conference and the teams that we play. I think we've been able to adapt well to that, but certainly using the spring to, to be more of an aggressive, uh, kind of be the ones to take the, the game to the opponent, whether home or away, and, and hopefully be able to, to put them under. So I think we've got the, the players that can do that, and they've got the mindset to do it. So yeah, we're going to look to, to continue to push that. I think that's that's good for us. We have, we have a team, we have a lot of fast guys. We have a lot of guys that are good in counterattacks, and, and I think that style suits us. It's less of a, of a keep the ball for a long time, you try to get to goal quick and, and finish, finish as fast as possible. So, Because in, in American soccer, it's like whoever scores the goal, the first goal, most, most of the time wins. So I think that's a big part. Norwegian striker Noah Kvifta led the Owl attack in 2023 with seven goals. 
So you had a good year last year in terms of goal scoring. How do you build on that and become an even better striker this year? Well, obviously that's what the spring's for, you know, building on what we did from last year. Uh, we came far last year, but we obviously want to come even further this year. Uh, for me, it's about getting to know my players even more, the players around me, uh, the wingers, the midfielders, the people that get me into the positions that I need to be. Uh, so just building off of that, that's what's what we're working on here today and, and what we've been working on this spring. Individually, I hope to get more goals and assists and keep helping the team. Um, and as a team, as a collective, um, obviously we're a new team, so obviously we're using this spring to settle in and everybody get to know each other, but I hope that we can go to the conference tournament again and do even better than in the fall and then maybe go all the way. What do you use the spring to do? Do you experiment with formations, systems, player positions? What's your goal in the spring? All of the above. I think the end goal is to get guys familiar with each other. We brought in 11 new players uh, in the spring semester. So we graduated a lot out, brought in a lot of new guys, and so just trying to get the team familiar with each other so they can get on the same page, learn our system, uh, and then be able to give a lot of guys minutes, you know, where we can get game minutes and, and try some partnerships and see how guys kind of click, but, uh, and then to keep everybody healthy. It's all, all part of the goal. Family on three! Family on three! One, two, three! Family. Family. Coming up next, he was a dominating defensive lineman as an owl. Now we see the gentler side of him as a children's author. That story next on Inside the Owl's Burrow. Inside the Owl's Burrow is brought to you by Adidas. By Baptist Health Orthopedic Care, the official sports medicine provider of Florida Atlantic Athletics. By Cedars, no better hummus. By FAU MBA in Sport Management, helping the sports and entertainment executives of tomorrow by Phil Smith Acura, driving the Owls to victory together in style. By Sage Dental, the official dental provider of FAU Athletics, book at mysagedental.com. And by Shiner Law Group, injury lawyers that get you more because you deserve more. Welcome back to Inside the Owls Borough, presented by Baptist Health. Brandon Bryant played defensive line for the Owls from 2012 through 2015. In the ensuing years, he's played in the NFL and Canada for nine different teams, both on practice squads and the active roster. However, Bryant recently became a first-time author with plans to expand his creative side even more. What stands out about your time here at FAU as a player? Just the guys. You know, the friends I made, the experiences, experience I had, you know, we had, you know, obviously we had some good teams, uh, but, you know, the friendships that you make here in college, you know, just last, go with you for a lifetime. You eventually made your way to the NFL? Uh, NFL Canada, back to the NFL. Uh, what would you tell us about your NFL experience? Uh, like you said, it's, it's hard to stay on a team, especially coming into the NFL as an undrafted free agent. That makes it even tougher. You know, it's always an uphill battle to prove your worth and prove that you belong. So. You're constantly working, you're constantly showing what you got, you're constantly competing, uh, and they're constantly looking to replace you as well. So it's a non-stop uphill battle. You know, you gotta scratch and claw and climb for every, every opportunity you have. And when you get the opportunity, you can't look back and you gotta make the best of it. Football ends for everybody at some point, and you've already taken a step toward your next career. What are you involved in now? Well, as of right now, uh, just, you know, written and published my first book, So You Wanna Be An Athlete, so I'm excited about that. I envision this being a series of many, you know, so you want to be an athlete and then so on and so forth, so you want to be blank. So I want to keep it going, you know, it's, it's fun, it's exciting, it's new, it's a challenge, you know, and it's, it, it also gets that your creative juices flowing. So, and everything that comes with it is, is, is fun and amazing as well. Like I'm, I'm able to now go and, you know, speak to kids and, you know, speak to schools and, you know, tell them about my experiences and what, what, I, what I believe helped me make it to the NFL. So everything that comes with it is just, it's, it's, it's been a great experience. The main message of the book is instilling a growth mindset. And when we say growth mindset, that means that you control the outcome of your abilities based on the work you put in. And other than that, it's just talking about how, as athletes, we, we know we have to go hard in the weight room. We know we have to go hard on the field. We know we have to stretch and take care of our bodies, but what a lot of us don't know until it's too late is that you have to put that equal energy in the classroom, especially, you know, to be a qualifier and accept the NCAA scholarship. So 
the book along with the growth, growth mindset just wants to get the message across that you have to put the same effort you do on the field and on the court in the classroom. And if you do put that same effort in the classroom that you put on the field, it, the, the, the possibilities are endless. Publishing could also be a tough business. And I, I guess you've self-published the book with some help? Yes, I self-published I self -published the book, but I went through an independent press company called Palmetto Publishing based out of South Carolina. And you know, they were amazing, but it is it is a tough role, but it's, it's beneficial in the back end because I own all the intellectual property to the book. If the book was so happened to get picked up by a movie or a TV show or a Netflix deal or a merchandise deal, you know, I wouldn't have to go through them. It would all, all be for me, but yeah, they helped connect me with the illustrator and editors and just formatting the book and helping me out with distribution. Uh, of course, you know, I had, you know, to, to, to pay for those, those, <laughs> those services, but it, it, it worked out, man, and it, it came out even better than I expected. You can purchase Brian's latest book at brandonsbooks.com. That's Brandon with an I. There you'll find links to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and other retailers. Thanks for watching. I'm Frank Fort. We'll see you next time on Inside the Owlsboro. And we leave you this week with a look at the football team's final off-season workout, which took place at the beach in Boca Raton. Every day, good, bad, and different. What do you control? You control your response, man. Make your response stronger than your emotions. Make your discipline stronger than your emotions. That's what mental toughness is. Is doing it. What he said was, I still got a job to do. I got to get the job done, no matter how I feel about getting that job done. This has been a presentation of Playfly.